So we are really excited to be joined by students and staff from Matthew Moss High School in Rochdale. Uh, big up the north, we love Rochdale. Yeah, um, so uh, we, we have too many people who are telling us what to do who aren't from the north. So they need to learn from us northerners with our northern accents. So we're really excited to join for you to join us today. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to Mr Leonard to introduce himself and the school, maybe tell us a little bit about the school and then um, introduce the students that we've got with us and the staff that we've got with us today. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, so I'm Dave Leonard. I'm the um, Strategic IT Director for the Water Grove Trust, of which uh, Matthew Moss is one of our two secondary schools. I've worked at Matthew Moss for coming up 17 years now, um, and the fact that I've been there for so long uh, lets you know just how much I love the place. Um, and I love the place because of the people. Um, our approach at the school is based on on empathy and uh, other values that we, we factor in in our change curriculum. Um, but we also really have a, a very important viewpoint, which is dealing with young people on an adult to adult basis. Um, so. I'm really proud to be able to present to you today um, some members of our school community. Um, so first of all, I'll uh, I'll introduce um, uh, James Glennie, who is our deputy head and uh, designated safeguarding lead. Uh, and then I think maybe from there, um, Mr. Glennie can introduce uh, our young people. Thanks very much, Dave. Uh, yeah, th thank you so much for having us on today, everybody. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Steve. Um, it's something we've, we've, we've been really excited about, actually, and been working um really creatively with it with our with our three young people here today so thank you very much for having us first of all um yeah to echo what what dave says i'm incredibly proud uh, that i'm dep uh, deputy ed teacher at matthew moss high school i think i've been there for 12 years now i think dave does that sound about right yeah, yeah about 12 years. um and again it, the reason I'm, I'm proud to to be to be part of the community is because it's for the reasons dave has mentioned just a fantastic community we work we work with, um, and and I think you mentioned the point adult to adult. That's the way we kind of try and practice what we preach at Matthew Moss. We speak to our learners on the level, um, and and try, I suppose that respect is, is reciprocated. Um, it's a really fantastic place to work, and we've got three fantastic students who are, who are joining us this morning. So uh, without further ado, I'll I'll hand over to the stars really. So, uh, Ian, how are you? Good morning. Um, morning. Um, well, my, like I said, my name's Ayan Learner in Year A. Matthew Moss is a great school to be at, and I'm proud to be a learner in Year A. And the staff is, are amazing. Um, students are amazing. And Matthew Moss wasn't my first choice of school anyway, but now that I'm here, I'd rather stay here because it's a really good school to be at. Awesome. Now I'll hand over to Matty. Hi, I'm Matty. I'm in year nine. And as Ian said, Matthew Moss is a great school. I love it. Again, it wasn't my first choice either. But I think that the community is really nice. Teachers, students and everyone else. They're just like pretty good. And I love them all. People. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's over to Elizabeth. My name is Elizabeth. I'm a student in year nine. Um, it's Matthew Moss is a really good school. I do lots of great things there. We do lots of things for charities and I get to go on and help a lot of people as a student at Matthew Moss. And, and I, I'm going to jump straight into there. Sorry to put you on the, the, the spot, but I know you. before we went on, you talked about all the wraparound and all the different things that are beyond your learning that you get involved in. Maybe if you want to yeah. just share that, cause I think that really puts Matthew Moff into the context of why it's so powerful, why it's such a, a great element of the community. Um, I do happy to help. So on that, we do like peer mentoring around the school, make sure everyone's happy and okay. Um, I also do school nursing health champion and that's where we help the NHS um, like nurses in school just doing things like setting up boards like non-smoking stuff and getting it from like a student's perspective and then from that I've been like a red box ambassador and we've helped a lot of primary schools and our school mainly and I just end up doing a lot of things because we also did watch Daily in Rainbows. We went there to celebrate that day and that was a lot of fun. So we do a lot of stuff at our school. Sounds good. It's, and I know that, uh, we, like we said, we came before we came on air, we talked about um, 
some of the the sports that people are involved with and the clubs and 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 a whole the whole picture of what it is. And I've I've had the privilege of coming over to uh, to Matthew Moss. Uh, there wasn't lots of students there that day, um, or there might have been. With well, a couple of times I've been now, haven't I, Dave? Yeah, I think the the first time you came, it was we were we were yeah we were we it were. was the last day before Christmas um, for the Christmas holidays, wasn't it? And yes. we were full. It's just that it's it's a very calm place. So sometimes people think that that um, it's not as full as we as we are. Um, but it's a school that's growing. Um, we're now oversubscribed. Um, we are uh, recognised as a good school. And and what, one thing I just want to say there and just chip in on is. I just want to say thanks to the to the young people who just spoke there because we absolutely we prepped them from a technical perspective on what we're saying here, but we have said to them very clearly we you know we are not scripting any of this. We are telling them to speak openly and honestly. So thank you for that, and, and thank you for not getting me into trouble just yet. Um, but like I say, I really do want to make that clear that this is young people's views and young people's voices. This is not something that we have scripted with them at all. This is your views, and please be honest to to all the questions that you asked today. Yeah, and and I suppose that's a yeah. Thank you very much for for. Um, I think it'll be really interesting for our, for our listeners to to understand the real on the core face, not just from teachers, those people who are living it and delivering it, but all those those students that are going through this time in terms of their learning. Uh, and that's what we're going to go into, um, and we're going to start asking questions about an honest appraisal. And if there's anything that you're just not sure about or want clarification on, because I talk very very quickly, uh, just give us a shout. All right. Um, so I suppose the first bit is. What what has learn, learning looked like at Matthew Moss and for you individually as students since since lockdown and since the school technically closed its doors to, to the majority of its learners? Well, it, mean, I, oh, I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> well, Everybody's um, eager. It's been very technologified. All learning's been set online on 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 the Google Classroom and by Gmail. So it's been different but we've still managed to pull through it so not it's not been too bad but different times so yeah yeah and and how have you in in terms of google classroom is that something that you're already familiar with beforehand and it's just developed so that it's not a a blended approach so you're not doing bits of classroom and bits of face to face it's all on classroom then i'm guessing you've used it before um yeah it's all on cl classroom and in school we have different teachers coming in every day so if we do need a bit of assistance or help we can ask but before schools closed our form tutors well my form tutor did um take us all through google classroom and make sure that we could get logged on okay like just to prep for what was to come so fantastic great what about you elizabeth do you want to oh, so we'll go with that Elizabeth then, seeing as Ben's gone that way? Elizabeth, have you got Sorry. anything to add to that? Yeah. Um, yeah, basically on the last days, all the teachers were kind of making sure we could all get on um, the online stuff. So like Google Classroom, we're setting up new accounts. Um, I know in French, we've definitely used like different things. We've got new accounts. We're using different things just to make sure we can all do a different type of learning. Matty, Matty. Well, I think like I'm getting on pretty well, but like sometimes when I need help, it's easier to say it to the teacher's face than rather than doing it by email. So yeah, so, yeah, so, we totally understand that, and um, and I think it's really interesting, isn't it, that we're in this position where remote learning has become what we do. Uh, and by the way, when Steve said he talks really fast. Um, I talk even faster, uh, and uh, so. But I think you're probably used to my lovely Lancashire draw rather than his white Yorkshire. Just ask him who won Battle at Roses. That's what you just need to ask him. Um, we'll leave it there. So yeah, when he thinks to come about remote learning, we know that it's been kind of thrust upon us, hasn't it? Um, nobody would choose not to be in a school. I don't. Know if, I don't. Know if, do, you, do you do you miss being in the school building? Yeah. Yeah. I miss my friends. I miss yeah. talking to everyone. Basically. Yeah, and just you, learning uh, from the class. So. And and from 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 that learning point of view, do you think do you think your learning has do you think it's affected your learning? I think that's a really a really yeah. honest question. Do you think yeah. it's affected your learning? At least in maths, we used to do like a lot of work and topics, and then now we just do um, task on Hegarty maths. Okay, so you use Hegarty maths. Okay, and 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 has, has that been? So I suppose we're in this position where like 
you would have used to have been going through, like you said, topic after topic, and then probably doing Hegarty Maths as like a bit of a top up at home. And now what you're saying is that Hegarty Maths has become the primary thing of what you've been able to do. Yeah. Uh, it's, inter it's interesting, isn't it? And so, so one of the things that we talked about, um, lots of people talk about Matthew Moss. Um, we've had, you, you probably don't realise, I know what well, you do actually, I think, one of the things where you're introduced about how good your school is, sometimes we probably don't realise how, um, what, what a difference that Matthew Moss is, is making and what kind of school it is. Uh, we've had at least three guests on our pos podcast out of the 150 who have talked about Matthew Moss and the the way that it works and the way that it is and the, the ethos and the culture. And I, like I said, I've had the privilege of coming over twice. Um, and f forgetting the fact that I forgot you were in school, it was a, it was, it just felt like, um, it, it did feel like a peaceful place. You were having building work done last time I came. Uh, but it, it feels so. That's that's always good news, isn't it? If you've got building work, that means you're expanding, and uh, it means that that's a that's a good position to be in. And uh, I, I started to see people starting using Chromebooks. I'm seeing some class that had them in, some and so other classes that had newer ones, some other classes that didn't have, some students that did have. And I wondered um, whether it's worth asking that question about um, around the stuff about devices and about accessing this. How 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 have you found that? Maybe, maybe if we start with you, Ariane. Uh, well, it's been, it was easier than I thought to begin with, but accessing it's easier, but it's not the same as, you're doing work, but it's not the same as actually being there in a classroom with your teacher and, you know, it's not the same, but it, it, it is what it is, but accessing it's been quite easy to be honest so do you do you have a chromebook at home or a laptop or is that uh, what you're I've got using? a laptop I've got a laptop at home but I'm in school now so I'm just using a chromebook okay oh, so, so you're in you're in the building right now yeah I'm in yeah okay fantastic yeah, Ian's one of the um, one of the offspring of one of our wonderful key workers. So, um, so that's why he's, he's coming into school at the moment. So, um, you know, massive big up to to Ian's mum um, for for all the all the good work that she's doing for us. Um, what what about you, um, Matty? Because Matty, you're uh, you're you're not on a Chromebook at the moment, are you? You're somewhat limited in in what you can access at home. So, would you like to talk about the devices? I mean. Um, I can do my work on my phone, but at the same time, I usually do it on my computer because I just find it easier to do on a computer because I can like open a lot of tabs and open all of the learning resources that I need. Yeah. Elizabeth? Um, yeah, we, I use a device because I've got my laptop, I've got a phone, iPad, all that. So that's easy and it's like, it's still not the same though because I used to get to go on lots of trips or do lots of things. I'd get out of class quite a lot because of all the clubs and stuff I do. Yeah, I used to have at least one a week if we was doing a sports competition. So I'd used to go to that. Or teachers nominate me to take tours and take people around school. So yeah, it's a bit less fun now, especially because so, I have got my friends. And you've been acting in trying to promote some um, some online clubs and to try and get out of some lessons. Is that, is that what you're saying to us? <laughs> <laughs> I end up on the club and then the trips just sort of happen. So let's go on lots of trips. Oh, that's fantastic! That's fantastic. And 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 on that, I know you mentioned about missing your friends. And, and that social element and the peer element, and I think that's a big thing, isn't it? Do you know, what yeah. there's you're obviously learning at home, but what are you guys doing without obviously prying and giving too much away? What are you doing in terms of that social element and to switch off from learning when lockdown is happening and you can't necessarily leave your house? Yeah, um, we I have to go on a walk for an hour a day outside somewhere. My mum likes to do that, fresh air for an hour. Um, I see my friends, like, will FaceTime, use house party, Snapchat, all that. But recently, because you can meet up with friends, like, social distancing, we've done that and we've gone to Springfield Park and all sat separate, but just kind of seen other people. Yeah, it's massive, isn't it? It's like, I, I've... 
you've, you've probably guessed from uh, the way that I, I am. I, I'm not a particularly um, not particularly good on my own. And, uh, and I suppose one of the things that we talk about um, uh, and we, we, we did in the planning was about what we do to recharge. Well, uh, what do we do to switch off? Because uh, the teachers on the call will probably be saying, well, uh, and, and it's probably the same for you as students, that you, you go from eight o'clock in the morning until whatever time in an evening looking at a screen and you go from one meeting to the next and you'll be going from one classroom to the next, um, which normally you would have had that interaction. And, and, I, and I suppose we've talked about like the need for social interaction and, and what that does. And, and it's great that it is great that we're, we're coming out of hopefully coming out of some of this, the, the effects of this pandemic and being able to do that meeting, that social distance meeting and, and seeing people. I wonder if we were to, if we were to flip it on its head uh, and to look at, um the what you've gained from being out of school um well i know Ariane, you're you're still in um but uh but i mean but of, of of learning this way what do you think what do you think you've what skills or what things have you developed well i think i've developed my it skills because i was always using my computer and um, yeah okay well, i think uh, now I can like stay focused for more time because when I want to go on my computer, I would usually play, but now that I have to do work, I need to stay focused. Great. Yeah, I've been doing like like self motivating because you don't, you, it's not there. There's not a teacher in front of you telling you you've got to do this work, and it's just kind of there on a computer, and you know you can do it any time. So it's like self motivating yourself to actually want to do the work or do that certain type of work and actually put effort in. Yeah. And, and do you think that'll help when you go back to school? Do you think that's, a, that's something that's massively developed that actually, you, when we say the word autonomy, so in terms of your own motivation, being able to take ownership of your own learning, do you think that's going to be something that's easier when you go back rather than the teacher telling you to do something all the time? Yeah, because now we will have to like wait for a teacher or if it's like an IT or something like that. We've gained a lot more IT skills having to use IT every day. So I think when we go back and it's a computer lesson or something like that, we'll be very easy to just get on with it. What about you, Ian? When you've been spending time in school, how has how have things changed in that respect? Are you seeing a big difference in your learning? Do you, are you still do you still feel as though you're more in charge of your own motivation and your own yeah life. i do because like there's not there's not always let's say if i had french today there's not always a french teacher in so you've you've just got to use like the change curriculum you've just got to use your agency and get on with it and use growth mindset and your composure um and there has been a change but luckily i managed to get through it and it's been all right. And when I have needed help, I've just like put something on the classroom, like a question. If I needed to ask a question, just put it on the classroom. Then my teacher will reply. So just 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 on that, I I, lo I love that you talked about agency. You talked about growth mindset. You talked about composure. Um, I think that's a uh, that's amazing. Like that you're in year eight and you're talking about I need to take responsibility for my own learning, and you're talking about actually. Um, this is not a situation anybody. I just love your positivity. That's the oh. thing that I'm taking here as well. The fact that this is a this is a horrible situation for everybody. Nobody wants to be in the situation, but we're going to make the best of this. That's what I'm hearing from when you're talking. And uh, yeah, it's it's, 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 it's really it's really nice to hear. And I think thinking about that, I, I was also I'm, I was also when we did because we didn't know before we came on air that you were in school. Uh, I was wondering if you had some cool posters in your bedroom about circles and cosine rules. But but it's but it's it's in it's in it's in uh, it's in school. So I think I think we could probably guess the answer to this. Um, but I'm interested to ask: Do, do you think it's better being uh, learning from home or or being in school? Um. To be honest, with me personally, I think in school because I've got that structure during the day. Um, but if I would be at home, most likely I'd probably just be being sat down. I probably, I'd probably do all my lessons, but later on during the day, I probably wouldn't get up at eight o'clock in the morning and then, you know, and start lessons. So I think for me, it's better being in school because I've got that structure as well. Great. 
I mean, I agree with the structure. And at the same time, in school, I can communicate and I can get help more often. And it's just better. I would rather be in school because I'm here, it's just a bit lonely. And like what kind of gets you through the lesson is having your friends next to you or like having a laugh in the lesson. Whereas if you're sat on a computer by yourself, probably doing it at different times, you don't really have as like much fun. And as well, I really love PE, but we don't really do that here and can't really do team sports and all that. There's only so much Joe Wicks you can do in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so you know, I think so. I think I'm just grabbing for this. Sorry, Steve, jump in at any point, but like that whole, it seems it seems a little bit like you're not being. Um, there's not. There's not a lesson that's set and you will go into a French lesson at nine o'clock on a Monday morning and you'll, your teacher will be there and everybody will join it. Is that, am I getting that right? That that's not the way that you're working as a school? We have like a school time sort of thing, but um, just, I'm not really up at nine o'clock, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we will come to Mr. Glennie in a, in, in a second. If you want to just add that in, and I'm, I'll, I'll then definitely pick up on on that one. Do you want to do you want to go in, sir? Thanks, sir. Uh, yeah, I think what the approach we're taking is that um, as a rule, what we try we try and ask our learners to follow their timetable. So at, where they can, because obviously we know right now that they, we're in uncertain times. But where they can, they follow their timetable, their structured lessons, uh, and basically try and roughly follow the timetable of the day. Um, and learn accordingly with that. Um, but just like myself, and I, and I know Mr. Leonard's in a similar position, obviously that doesn't always happen because things crop up and, and, and this, that, and the other. But as a rule, we, we ask them to follow the general structure of the day um, and, and, and learn, in, I suppose, in line with the learning set from their teachers on the classroom, um, kind of accordingly to that, really. We so, do recognise, though, that, that not everybody has access to you know, we, we are very much reliant on technology at this stage because all work's being set via Google Classroom. There are some learners though that may only have one device in their in their house. So therefore not everybody can be doing the learning at the same time. And possibly even that device is mum's or dad's laptop. And if they go out to work and take that with them, then it's not possible. So we are we are very uh, understanding, we're very empathetic towards the situation and the needs of, of the learners in that respect. Yeah, and I, and I think I watched a great video on on, on something called Tequity. So looking at the whole element yeah. of um, actually what does a demographic look like? And I think, obviously, I work for a college, and I'm sure you guys are already doing it now. When students join, we need to do a real deep dive in terms of what is there. If we're going to be doing homework and we're going to be pushing flipped learning or even uh, the new normal, as people keep calling it, what does that student's home like look like, look like in terms of their access yeah. to technology and their opportunity for learning? But, Elise, if I want to come to you in terms of the, something that you just said, and you said, actually, you know what? If it, if it was me, I'd probably wouldn't want to be up at nine o'clock. <clears throat> and that's fine because everybody's different. And I've seen some great things going on um, globally where actually, um, People have the option to come in, and, and and I'm not saying that the school's going to de redesign it, so don't think that that's what I'm saying. But if you could then take that as an option where you had a decision and you said, well, actually, I'll come in because I feel I work better and I, I want a bit of a lie-in and I could stay a bit longer, is that something you'd want to take forward and something that you've actually liked about under lockdown? I like getting to sleep in, but if I have a chance to like go back to school and see my friends, yeah. I'd rather that, but... Because of like all the conditions and stuff, um, I wouldn't be that sure. But, but I suppose coming out of lockdown, if, if all schools said we're going to really consider what learning looks like, and this is no pressure on Matthew Moss, this is only my, so so apologies to sir and sir, but if, if they then said, right, schools are now going to start at 10 o'clock, but actually going to finish at 4 o'clock, what, what would that, I can see you, for anybody who's not watching the video, I can see you smiling. Uh, is that something that for you would really would benefit you? Do you think that would help your learning? Um, yeah, because I, I don't really like getting up in the morning. Um, and it's pretty hard to get up and then you're kind of all tired when you walk in. And then I think if you finish a bit later, even if we start later, that would be better than waking up early. Okay, so that's one learning and that's one thing that you might want to take forward. What about uh, Matty and, 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 and everybody else? What does everybody else think in terms of? It I mean, doesn't have. To. I don't mind getting up early, so I mean I don't mind finishing at three 
three twenty five or four twenty five. So it's like we can start at ten. I don't mind, but at the same time, I wake up early anyway. Okay, that's yeah. what I do usually. Yeah. For me, I think I I do like waking up early in the morning. So for me, I like it as it is now. Like you start school at ten to nine and then finish at twenty five past three. So we, if we did start at like ten and then finish at four twenty five, I wouldn't mind it. But I do like it as it is now. Okay. Just can I can I just can I just jump there then? Uh, sorry, Steve. So uh, maybe, maybe what we're saying. I would if if we did a a poll of your school, um, or every school, there will be there will be some Elizabeths in the school. There will be some Ians and Matties in the school somewhere, and there'll probably be some people that would be even later than Elizabeth, and maybe even earlier than I am, or some people that say, Do you know what? I reckon. I can do all my maths on a Monday for the week and I just want to do a day of maths rather than maths for one period, then science, then English, then what, what, how can we do that? Well, it's interesting. There's quite a lot of research, isn't there, about the teenage brain and uh, I think as people get older, they are more genetically programmed to, to stay in bed later um, and we actually looked at this a few years ago we, we spent a long time looking at redesigning the curriculum and trying to make sure that we took into account all stakeholders views on that and it was very interesting because we looked at radical things like having um, like 20 minute lessons and just having short short chocks of, of lessons rather than double lessons which can take people out of their comfort zone, shall we say? Um, but ultimately, when we did the the polls to to parents and to and to learners, really, what they wanted was to stay the same, um, and, and we ended up really really keeping. But we we went into that with a very open mind as to what people were going to say. We were looking at things like human scale education, where um, young people spend more time with fewer teachers so that they really get to know each other and build on those relationships. Uh, and we've tried to do that within the school through the the way that we build the timetable. But it was really interesting. We've, we've looked into those um, those those potential scenarios. And, and, and interestingly, it's kind of representative on what the, the people who are with us today have said is that they kind of want to stay the same. Yeah. So that, that's your, your, your timetable and everything else. But is there anything, I suppose my next question would be, uh, definitely to the to the students, and, but even to the staff on, on the call as well today, any learnings or anything that's been a positive during lockdown that actually you might want to see, even if you return to the building, that you think, actually, I'd like that to continue going forward. Is there any of those thoughts? Elizabeth, okay. you're nodding. Do you want to go for it? Yeah. Um, yeah, since being in lockdown, I've started to learn Spanish because our school doesn't offer that. Um, we do French, so I've been doing both Spanish and French. Um, and I'd like to go back to school and just carry on doing French, are, are French you, and Spanish. Are you are you doing? Are you using like a program like Duolingo or something like that to teach? Yeah, yourself? Duolingo, Memrise, Quizlet, and then I bought the proper GCSE books and things like that. So, so you and you, was that just just because you wanted to do that, or is it? Yeah. Is, that's that, how, how cool is that? You're talking about agency earlier, I, I am. Like that whole, I'll tell you what, I want to learn that today. Okay, I will do. Uh, lovely, love it. Anybody else? I don't know, oh, Matty. Um, well, for me, I like what Steve said. Um, is there anything that like you'd like to continue with when we do eventually come back to school? For me, I do like being on technology and on Chromebooks and everything because I do like technology. It's a thing that I'm very fond in, but I do also I do like writing in like my books and everything. So I would like to like write in my books. So in a way, I wouldn't really want Chromebooks like if we return back to school, but. It, if we do have them, I don't mind because I do like technology. So, so, so a mixture, you'd like to see a mixture rather than technology replace everything. You'd like to still use elements of, of the old school or the traditional learning, but you'd also like to see some some of the gamification and some of the nice elements of technology 
um, and some of, and, and I know Elizabeth just mentioned being able to learn Spanish at home. That's that's definitely not possible. Um, you can read a book, but it does make it a little bit more fun, doesn't it? Yeah, fantastic. Uh, how about you, Matty? Any, anything particular? I mean, that you've learned? I mean, I agree with Ian because, like, I want to do stuff on the computer, but at the same time, I sometimes want to write in my book rather than just type. So I, I think I would just want to keep it the same, the same way it was before lockdown. Okay. Yeah, it's really it's really interesting. This is this is great. We're, like we we love the fact that we, I think we probably expected a voice to say we want to get straight back into the school, or from some we've said we want to keep it all. We like this that we can just control ourselves. But you, what you're saying is there's some really good things that we should keep, um, and there's some things that that we shouldn't. And I think we we were uh, quite fortunate. We're helping run a, a conference on the 24th of June. Which is called the new. This is the craziest title ever. The new next or never normal. So the new normal, the next normal or never normal, and we're going to be looking at is is the is it, we're going to do something new. What's the next thing that's coming, or is it's never going to be normal again? What we're going to do, and I think I'm listening to you and thinking this is this is we've got we should listen to this. Teachers should listen to this. Um, head teachers and and people from the government should listen to this. That there is there is something that you've talked about agency you've talked about still liking to write with a pen and having books you've talked about using chromebooks so my question here is and this is um this is like a million dollar question if you answer this one right uh we'll put you we're on with jeremy clarkson we say we're not we're not giving him away a million pound ben don't be saying that on, on live right. there. i'll get him on i'll get him on with jeremy clarkson i knew what to be a millionaire what do you think what do you think we need to have what do you think we need to do to make this stuff happen Well, to come back into school, there's a lot of things that we need to do, like keeping the social distancing of two metres, keeping that in classrooms. Um, so there will be quite a lot of things that if we were to return to school, there will be quite a lot of things that we will need to happen. So like, I'm wiping down your surfaces every time or every classroom classroom you go into so there'll be quite a few things that need to happen so yeah yeah de definitely in terms of in terms of being able to either keep some of the technology stuff or to that what do you think we maybe need to to look at there um it's a tough question it's, that's yeah. why i said it's a mil that's why i said it's a million dollar question like <laughs> uh, if we had that we'd all be like prime minister or something probably wouldn't we yeah. Can I jump in, Ben? Of course you can, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I, just for, for me, anyway, the, the idea that I think the idea of becoming an expert in something is kind of forged out of necessity. And I think that this situation, yeah, it's been, in, it's, been a, it's been a really tough time for everybody, but some of the kind of glimmers of gold from it are how, how kind of proficient our young people are in regard to their use of ICT. And I think that on a return, what the return you know not even taking into account what it would look like or be yet but do we need to maybe not reverse that trend that we've actually maybe there's been quite a few experts created throughout this situation so it's about for me it's about furthering that and how we can help help them progress i mean i think about careers and how many future programmers web designers all these types of fantastic opportunities that could be born out of this kind of troubled time really so that that's a really important question for us as a school, and how how, how we how we ensure that's um, you know laid out for our learners on on return as well. Yeah, definitely, totally agree. Totally agree. And 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 um, even how I think it's a big picture education. So this is not necessarily a question, but more of a thought. That um, on a podcast recently we talked about um, Dubai's approach to education, and they've got um, a method uh, and an approach where actually, even though your school might not run a provision or actually ne next door, there's a collaborative approach to education. So you might do Spanish um, outside of, and go to a different school, but actually you might do PE and something else within your school. And you can, it's a cross-section of and cross-pollination of ideas and expertise. And I think the big picture thing is actually how can we allow people to kind of study what they want to study, but actually help the schools out because they're shackled by funding and actually who they can bring into an organization as well uh, and, and that's really interesting uh, and it definitely got me resonating with, with the conversations we'd had when elizabeth said about spanish 
and and that element and and actually how can we ensure that if that's a skill or something people want to develop they might not sit a gcse because you might not need the gcse but being able to have a passion for languages and be able to explore that i think is is really nice because you just want to celebrate passion for learning don't you and i think that's what we need to get into the habit of um gccs are not happening this year and actually, what is the impact of that, that people think that learning doesn't need to happen because there's no endpoint assessment? And how can we change that approach? But it's, and you're probably listening to me rambling on, it's a big picture thing in terms of education as a whole in the UK and further afield, rather than just for one school, definitely, to think about. So can I can I just ask a question there? And I'm kind of stepping on the toes of our of our hosts here, but it's kind of picking up on Ben's question earlier. And I wonder, um, Ian got his chance to answer that question, but for, for Elizabeth and Matty, what would you add to our school to make it better? I mean, I th I think I would just like, since we've done a lot of computer work, I think I would just like add a bit more computers and electro and things in general, like this technology, because we've done a lot of work on technology at this moment. And I think we would just like do better than before. Um, yeah we just need to find like a balance because we don't want to use computers all the time because then we may as well just have stayed in lockdown but when we go back we want to maybe do some more things like doing practical stuff because usually in science you do practical stuff then um do the things on all that sort of boring stuff but there's <laughs> now you, can, you don't really get to do practical things now it's all just all theory and it's just a bit so i'd like to find like a balance between that so we can do more practicals and enjoy lessons more i'm the same if i'm going into science i'm wanting that bunsen burner out and i want those chemical reactions to be seen through all those crazy videos that you see steve's a pe teacher just remember, that's what yeah, he's background so. is so he likes uh, kicking a football <laughs> all right calm down but uh, yeah definitely I'm, I'm i'm more of a practical person um i i and that focus of, of bringing learning to life for each individual is so important and I, and I think we can really tap into it and those conversations that actually that outside of the skill set of the school but we could use technology to bring experts in to deliver some of those really so you could have some of the best scientists in the world presenting into your school some really fantastic ideas and you can be then sharing ideas using technology outside of your remit of Rochdale. So you could be communicating with some some other school um, pupils in Leeds, in London, in across the pond in America. And I think that's probably something that I'm seeing that actually I think is the benefit of technology and we need to bring that into schools a little bit more um, because the fear is, is has been broken down in terms of what that could look like and and, and, and definitely. So one, one, one other question as well um, is around... Um, so we've talked about education and what we want to do to 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 change things if we were to come back. Let's think long term. Our our podcast is called Edgy Futurists. Okay, it's hard work to, for most people to say, um, but it's even harder work for people to actually think about the future of education because uh, some people say anybody who tries to predict the future is doomed uh, because you never get it right. At some point, we thought we were going to have flying cars by now, <laughs> and we don't. Uh, we thought we'd have time travel, but we don't. Uh, so we thought we might even be going to Mars, but we're not. So I wonder um, if you would think around what the world might be like in 20 years' time. Um, let's say 20. Just pick a number out of thin air um, because you'll be as old as we are now in 20 years. Think about that. Uh, or even not not quite because Mr. Leonard's really old. No, that was uh, old as me. No. In, in fact, I was just thinking – when uh, when Mr. Leonard started working at your school, you weren't even born. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, twenty years. What do you think? What do you think? Should we start with Should we start with you, Matty? Yeah. Well, I hope that in twenty years that people won't like judge people based on their race and religion, and I hope that like the world's going to be like a peaceful world and there's not going to be wars anymore. Okay, let's go. Uh, I agree with Matty, but um, in terms of like technology in schools, I think I think it'll roughly be the same as it is like using textbooks and writing in them. But I think there will be I think technology by in twenty years time would have enhanced, but as in 
in general, I do hope that, you know, as Matty said, there won't be any wars and we will be in peace. So. Cool. Yeah, in 20 years' time, I hope there's no discrimination of any kind, sexism, racism. Uh, um, I hope that in schools, maybe we get taught a bit more about like black history or LGBTQ plus rights. Um, just have a bit more like diversity in lessons because we have learning for life days at Matthew Moss where we learn about all these different things because we kind of like have a PHSE day all wrapped into one and we just spend the whole day focusing on that. Maybe if we did more of them lessons and other schools did it and then it would break down lots of barriers and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah, and I, and I think that's a fantastic point. And I think that we've really brought to the forefront that we've got experts within your organisation, in your school, uh, like yourselves, and, and absolutely brilliant insights that you've shared today. And and you leading on those kind of things that obviously you need to speak to your teachers and make sure they're happy with it. But actually, how can we as students put the power into our own hands and say, you know what? I, I'm interested in this subject and the Black History Month and all of those things that you mentioned. How can we do more and how can we maybe deliver and, and, and do sessions on that as part of tutorials and pastoral programmes and, 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 and do that? Because um, I'm sure the teachers would love that element. I'm sure they would, that taking that ownership of it um, and, and, and the power of technology and, and the research and the elements that we could do and bringing videos in that already exist. I think that I think that's a great idea. Really do. Yeah. I think as 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 we kind of uh, we'll, we'll start thinking about how we wrap this up. But I think one of the things that is really exciting about um, what people talk about at Matthew Moss is D six. Um, and D six, what you what you've got to what you've got to know. I used to work at a school in Accrington, uh, just over the hill from you, and um, it was because of Matthew Moss's plan on D6 that we created what we called Saturday Sixes. And our Saturday Sixes programme was exactly the students from lower school would come in on a Saturday morning and be taught by our sixth form students. We would pay the sixth form students to teach the lower school. There'd be, there'd be one member of staff there that's kind of there just to make sure that everybody's safe. But other than that, it was teachers' free zone older students to younger students, older students who had done that exam previously uh, and, and in, in very recent were supporting the learners. Um, and I know that, that you, you, you've you got to understand that your school has inspired lots of other schools that are doing something similar. So uh, I wonder if you could maybe, I know I've, I've just ruined it, haven't I? Because I just basically said what D6 was. So uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. So what what do you know about D six and and is it something that you've that you've heard much of or involved with or anything like that? I mean, I know that this is like D six, and we'll just like come to school, and then there's going to be students from sixth form that just come and help us, and we can bring like homework in because I've been once to D six, and I know that I came and I just got on with my work, and then some students from sixth form came and helped me with the work. Great. Well, what I know about D6 is it's like day six, what Matty said, and there will be sixth form students there to like help you. But I've never been to D6, but some of my friends have, and I've asked them, uh, was it good and did you like it? And they've said, yeah, that they've liked it. So, and I actually didn't know that D6 inspired a lot of other schools to go on like, do the same thing so um that's another thing that Matthew Moss should be proud of as well yeah 100% Elizabeth what about you have you attended D6 I've never attended D6 but lots of my friends have and they have a good time to see each other they get the homework done it's easier than doing it like stressing about it at home and stuff like that and do, yeah, do you think <clears throat> do you think the fact that it's people that are close to your age helps yeah um because of h to h and uh, me helping about in school i usually welcome the year sevens and they kind of like it a bit more and they smile a bit more and feel less awkward because there's someone their age who's just experienced it and they're going to help them and yeah they really like it 
I think D6 is traditionally attended more by people in year year 10 and 11 as the as the work really ramps up in terms of their preparation for the for the GCSEs and um, it's something that we're looking at even at the moment we're looking into the possibilities of doing a digital D6 at the moment so it's DD6 it's like some kind of a wrestling room move <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's really, really popular and well attended, and, and it's great that 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 message is coming through to to people in in year eight and nine in in, in preparation because they know what they're going to be coming into then in, in in the next year or so when they when they start attending. Yeah, I think it's I think it's really important as well that like like Dave says, we it, it, the school is open on a Saturday for everybody. You know, we do generally get slightly more learners at, at, in key stage four coming, but actually it's open for everybody, and, and you'll you'll get the kind of same provision. The doors are open. You'll have somebody there to support you through. Usually, you know, a peer, which like like someone alluded to before, is, is maybe it's kind of it's maybe more supportive. Really, um, you've got that fantastic approach. You know, you'll be fed, you'll be watered, you'll be looked after. You've got some ICT. It's a really great initiative and something we're really proud of, yeah. Yeah, that, it sounds absolutely fantastic. And I know that we're, we're, we're keen at some point um, when when we go back in, we'd like to come over and, and, and see what it looks like in practice. We see, I've read about it from, from David Price and all of that. And, and 100% we, we want to do that and potentially even maybe do a live podcast or something in the, in the school and really get some insights in terms of what's happening on that day. Um, but I, I suppose as we close, I just want to ask, um, from the from the from the from Sir and Sir, but also definitely from from the learner voice that we have on. Is there any final thoughts that you want to share with us, um, just in terms of anything we've had a conversation with, um, or and, and if not, we'll then wrap up and 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 say thank you very much. Thanks, Steve. Uh, I, I'll just make a comment if you don't mind. I'm just how proud I am of not just the three learners on here today, but all of our learners. Obviously, you know that during the current climate. The learning that's been produced is fantastic under strange circumstance, but the fact that, you know, um, the C of Composure, the first acronym for, for our curriculum, is about staying composed. And there's an avatar with a little man on a tightrope, you know, when, when the wind blows and the wind will blow in life sometimes, we stay balanced uh, and we keep our heads. And I'm, I'm so proud of our learners for doing that. Awesome. <clears throat> Guys, what have you got to add to that? What's your final thoughts? Matty, should we start with you? Um, I mean, I think that overall, what we've said, I think that Matthew Moss is like a great school. And even in lockdown, we still did great, all of us. And I think that that shows that how great a school is. Thank you. Ian, what about you? Um, well, yeah, like what Matty said, but the school have done a really good job to pull together in this current climate and like um, welcomed in the children, the vulnerable children and the children of key workers. So thank you to Matthew Moss for having me here, I guess. So thank you. And Elizabeth? Um, yeah, um, Liz, my head of family, she's actually rung my mum and she's had a conversation with her. So she's still doing a pastoral role, even though she's not even we're not even in her skill. So that's been nice to know. And yeah, thank you, Matthew Moss. I think I'd just echo what James said and just, just that pride of the entire community, um, of the students for their hard work, of the staff for the, particularly those who are less comfortable in working in using technology. They've really pulled all, pulled out all the stops and, and up their game. But every member of the school community to the admin staff who are now preparing to move to a new um, MIS during this time of lockdown, to the support staff who were there all, all hours of the day to try and help everybody out. And, it, you know, right the way through, our, our cleaning technicians even, you know, they're going through some, some amazing amounts of work at the moment to keep that school safe for everybody. So that pride in the community community is, is the final word that I'd, I'd offer from, from myself. Yes, yeah. that's amazing. And we, 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 we've heard, like I said, we've heard lots of good things. We've interviewed uh, Dave on, on the podcast before. We've talked about to other people about the things that Matthew Moss are doing. And we know that uh, Mr. Morehouse and the team, that uh, what they're building is, is, is something really special. Um, and I think we don't always realise what we've got until it's gone. But it's really nice to hear what you've, what you've heard that what you've talked about actually you do realize how good it is and you realize the the um it's not the same for every student is it uh in other schools so you you um it's so great to have you on today and we're grateful and and 
I hope that there's people that when the people listen to this, other schools, that they will they will think, do you know what? We need to go and have a look at what Matthew Moss are doing. Maybe have a look on their website or go and visit and see what it is because because something powerful, the D6 things that you're talking about, the composure, growth mindsets, the stuff of supporting people um, even even when they're not in the building, like you just mentioned there, Elizabeth. So it's a massive thank you from us as the Ed Futurist um, for you giving us your time. Uh, I know it's over lunchtime, so either you had your lunch before you came on or you're hungry now. So thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, we just want to wish you all the best in the – obviously, you're going to come up into – Every year is important, <clears throat> but we know in the British education system, we know what's coming up in the next few years, um, whatever that's going to look like. And uh, we, we, we're trying to, we're fighting for you to try and abolish exams, but probably not going to be before you get there. So I'm fight <laughs> we'll still keep fighting uh, anyway. But thank you so much for your time uh, and, uh, and for your brilliant insights. It's just been amazing. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.